Hi, this is Kevin from the Matsaurus, and in this video we're going to be doing questions 11 to 15 of the Tamua paper, the test of mathematics for undergraduate admission. So we're getting into some really challenging questions in this paper now. Um, there'll be different ways of doing these questions than the way I've done them for sure, so do let me know if you've got any other ideas below or if there's anything you're not sure about. Please, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel, really. It's the best thing you can do to help me if you've enjoyed these uh, videos. Um, also check out the Amazon store if you want some suggestions for wider reading of things that you can read around your A-level studies in preparation for undergraduate maths. I've got some suggestions there for bridging material as well between A-level and undergraduate that could be really useful for you. So have a look at those and I'll get on with the questions. So in question 11 we want to find the sum of the real values x that satisfy these simultaneous equations and you can think about this for a while uh, but something that comes up in these Tamua papers a lot are disguised uh, quadratics and disguised simultaneous equations and that's what we're looking at here so um, if we use the rules of logarithms on the first one here we'd have log 3 of x plus 2 log 3 of y is equal to 1 so what I want to do here is to do something like writing a is log 3 of x and b is log 3 of y and then these two equations the first one just becomes a plus 2b equals 1 and the second one is a times b equals minus 3 so for example in the first one I can write now a is 1 minus 2b and substitute it into the second one here to get 1 minus 2b times b equals minus 3 or b minus 2b squared equals minus 3 so I've got 0 equals 2b squared uh, minus b uh, minus 3 and uh, you should be able to factorize that pretty quickly and we get uh, 2b minus 3 times b plus 1 so here I have b equals 3 over 2 or b equals minus 1 and we have a equals 1 minus 2b so a is uh, 1 minus 3 over 2 times 2, so minus 2, or uh, 1 minus 2 times minus 1, so that's 3, uh, and then, uh, so it's the a we're interested in because we want the sum of the real values of x, so we've got uh, log 3 of x then is either minus 2 or 3, so that means x is either 3 to the minus 2 or 3 cubed, which is 1 ninth or 27 so the sum is 27 plus 1 ninth which is of course 27 and 1 ninth so that's h okay in question 12 it's given that we've got this differential equation uh, but we're only meant to use as methods so if you haven't looked ahead to harder differential equations and you're tempted to try and use some other method to solve it i would hesitate and try and find an easier way um, and we've got some initial conditions and we want to find v when t equals 9. So actually a uh, difference of two squares crops up uh, everywhere in these papers as well and that's exactly what we've got here, right? Um, you see this 1 plus root t that perhaps looks a bit odd uh, on the bottom here but t minus 1 you see I can write as root t minus 1 root t plus 1 as a difference of two squares and on the bottom I've got 1 plus root t uh, so I can just cancel the 1 plus root t here and then I've just got v is a nice simple integral then 24 pi times root t minus 1 uh, dt and uh, then I can just integrate right so I've got v uh, equals well t to the half here becomes t to the 3 over 2 and then I want to times by 2 thirds 2 thirds of well actually uh, let's just write 2 thirds here and I'll leave the I'll leave the 24 pi out here for a second uh, and then minus t and I'm going to get a constant of, inter of integration here right so we know when v equals 7 t equals 1 so I get 7 equals 24 pi times 2 thirds minus 1 plus c so that's um, minus a third times 24 pi so that's minus 8 pi so I get c equals 7 plus 8 pi just moving that to the other side Right, so actually I want to find the value of v when t equals 9, so I can go to this with the value of c that I know now, and then v is going to be 20, so v is going to be 
24 pi times 2 thirds and I'll put t equals 9 in so 9 to the 3 over 2 minus 9 and then plus this 7 plus 8 pi for the constant so I've just got to sort this stuff out now so 24 pi 9 to the 3 over 2 that's the square root of 9 cubed so that's 3 cubed that's 27 2 thirds times 27 is 2 times 9 which is 18 and 18 minus 9 is 9 so I get 9 here and then plus 7 plus 8 pi so I've got to do 24 times 9 so 20 times 9 is 180 4 times 9 is 36 uh, so I get all of this stuff 180 plus 36 plus 8 gives us 216 plus 8 or 224 pi and then the seven on its own there, so the answer is C. Right, another disguised equation here, and you've got to just learn to look out for these and to spot them, because uh, the key thing here is that two to the sine x squared is uh, the same as two to the two to the sine x, so that's four to the sine x. So if I write here, y is equal to 2 to the sine x, then we've got a disguised quadratic here, y squared minus 4y plus 17 over 4. So at this point you might be tempted to say, ah, maybe there's no maximum value here because a quadratic doesn't have a maximum. But the domain of this quadratic is restricted because I can only get values of y that are 2 to the sine x for some value, right? So sine x uh, actually let me write it like this, so sine x only goes between minus 1 and 1, right, so if I do 2 to the sine x, right, now 2 to the power of something is an increasing function, so I can just get here uh, 2 to the minus 1, which is a half, and 2 to the 1, which is 2, and you can think about it carefully, um, you can't get anything out of that range, um, and as I said, it's because this inequality continues to work straightforwardly because 2 to the x is a strictly increasing function, so I can just do that. Now, um, so actually what I'm looking at is this quadratic, but only with possible values of y between a half and two. All right, so let's just complete the square on this quadratic quickly. So I get y minus two squared uh, minus four plus 17 over four, which is y minus two squared uh, plus one quarter. So if you think about what this quadratic looks like then, it's got a minimum here at two, one quarter, Right. And so if I'm looking at values, possible input values between a half and two, right, where is this largest? Well, it's going to be largest here at a half, right, because I'm only allowed to, to look on this little interval here. So this is the, this is the maximum uh, for the function that we're looking at. Okay, so we take uh, y equals one half in this quadratic, and let's use the completed square form. So a half uh, minus two is minus 3 over 2 squared plus a quarter, so that's 9 over 4 plus a quarter, which is 10 over 4, or 5 over 2, and so the answer is B. Right, in 14 here we've got another um, pair of disguised uh, sort of simultaneous equations here, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to think of uh, S as sine 2x and c as cos 2x, so I've got uh, s plus root 3c equals minus 1, and I've got root 3s uh, minus c equals the square root of 3, and I'm going to solve these simultaneously. So if we multiply the first one here by root 3, I get root 3s plus 3c equals minus root 3, and then I'll take uh, this one here and this one here and subtract them, so I get 4c equals minus 2 root 3, and so c equals minus 1 half root 3. Now, um, so what about the sine? Well, uh, so s is minus 1 minus root 3 times c, just from this second equation here, so I'm going to have to do something like that. So I get minus 1 uh, plus 3 over 2, which is a half. Okay, So I'm looking for values that satisfy both of these equations. And it's key that we're thinking about 
both of them here, right? Um, so I think people probably prefer to work with sine equals a half. We know that's got 30 as a straightforward solution, but again, you should know these basic values of sine and cosine for 30 and 60 and 45 and how they work for this exam. So, um, so let's think about sine x, okay? And so we know that that's a half here at 30 and also 150, but it's sine of 2x between 0 and 360. So uh, I, I also want to include the, uh, the, the, the next ones here, right? 390 and 360 plus 450 is 510, right? So if I'm gonna say sine 2x equals a half in this interval, I'm gonna say that 2x is either 30, 150, 390 or 510 and so x equals 15, 75, 195 and 255. At this point you might be tempted to just add all those together and move on to the next question but you'd be wrong because we've also got to check that we get for these values cosine of 2x is minus 1 half root 3. Okay now you know, we know that, you know, sine is a half and cos is like root three over two or minus root three over two can go together. I mean, so I think I'm not too worried about, actually, I'm not gonna check this in sort of, um, well, you'll see what I'm gonna do. Right, so cosine, okay, between naught and 360, we know it looks like this. And let's put in the second uh, loop of it here, right? So let's just think, right, can I plausibly get a negative value for cosine of 2x for these values. Well, look, x equals 15 uh, times 2 is 30, right? So it's positive here, right? So actually that one doesn't work. If I do 75 and I get to 150, yes, I've got a negative value here. Um, if I do 195, I'm gonna get to like 390, so I'm gonna get 390, right? So that's here, it's positive. So that one doesn't work. Um, 255 gives me 510 and that's somewhere over here, and that could be a negative value, right? So that one does work. So actually the only two values, and okay, you can double check if you want that you do actually get minus root three over two, but given the range of answers here, it's pretty, I don't really need to do that. Um, so the only two that work are 75 and 255, so I add those together, um, right? And I get uh, 330, so the answer is B. So. Sneaky question there at the end, gotta be careful to check that it satisfies both of the equations, not just one of them. Right, 15, find the real non-zero solution to this equation. Um, so we've clearly got some powers of two and some powers of three flying around here, but the sort of, the, the powers of two, if you like, are the top level power here, right? So I'm gonna think of those, I'm gonna think of those first, right? Because, so on the top here, I've got two to the nine X, and on the bottom, I've got two cubed uh, to the three to the x, and that's a quarter, which is two to the minus two. So, uh, right, so two to the nine to the x, um, and then on the bottom, two to the three to the three to the x, so that's two to the three times three to the x, so that's two to the three to the x plus one, that's two to the minus two, and then using the rule for dividing for powers, I get two to the nine x minus, 3x plus 1 is 2 to the minus 2. So I've got 9 to the x minus, uh, oh, sorry, there's a, uh, not 3 to the x plus 1, 3 to the x plus 1 in the power there is 2 to the minus 2. And that should, that should be the same here, right? So 2 to the, two, so it's 2 to the 3 to the x plus 1. It's 3 times 3 to the x, which is 3 to the x plus 1. Um, okay, so I get 9 to the x minus 3 to the x plus 1. Uh, is equal to uh, minus two then. And now, there we go, I've got another disguised quadratic here, right? If I let y equals three to the x, then y squared is nine to the x. So this just becomes y squared. And actually maybe uh, rather than three to the x plus one, I want to think of it as three times three to the x. And then I can just say that's minus three y plus two equals zero. So I get y minus one times y minus two is zero. So y equals one or two, and y is three to the x, so I've got three to the x is one or two, so that means either x equals zero, or uh, three to the x equals two, so x equals log three of two, 
and we want the non-zero solution to this equation. Uh, so not x equals zero, but x equals log three of two, and the answer is A. So I hope that was useful. Um, just one more quarter of this paper to go, the hardest questions, and they'll be out very, very soon if you're watching this live, or if you're watching this in the future, it'll all be there already in a playlist linked below, or you can find everything I've done here, as well as the things on the Maths Admissions Test over at the Mathsaurus website as well. So please do check that out. Please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.